Hello, this is Zach Hale, and I'm going to be showing you my Super Collider patch today uh, that I've been working on. So Super Collider is a programming language, for those of you who don't know, and but it's also a synthesis engine at the same time. So code is written like this, which looks like um, object-oriented programming, and then it's sent over your local network on your computer to the synthesis um, engine, and it's all done with OSC messages. So first, I'm just going to explain a little bit. Maybe some of this won't make sense in context right now, but maybe a second it will. So first, uh, what you do is you just interpret things by clicking like that. And that means that now this rhythm speed, which uh, is a global variable, that's what this tilde means right here, means it's a global variable, is now equal to 1. Um, so what I did with this is I made an array of values which represent the rhythms, uh, whatever kinds of rhythms I wanted to do. This I got from, uh, I did a little analysis of me playing a rhythm on my desk and then that's how I got that. And these are like easier ones as you can see, uh, pretty much 16 notes. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Let's run that. And then here we come to synth definitions. So what a synth def is, is pretty much you encapsulate a function. Um, so a function is like all of this right here. And so if, say, for this one, for instance, uh, soundin.ar gets the input from my microphone. Um, then this is an amplitude follower. So as you can see, this is assigned to n. And if we look here, actually, you can see all of the arguments. Uh, that this amplitude object takes. So the input, the attack time, release time, mul, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the next one is pitch. So it uses uh, the input and it can uh, tracks the pitch. And then uh, this is another thing that's a little bit more complicated, but it sends it back out of the synth depth because this is put on the, the server or the audio engine. And then to send things back into the programming language so that I can use them, we have to send them back. So that's just pretty much, I mean, these all do different random different things, and I'm not going to go through every one of them. But that's just a little idea. So I create this definition called synth depth pitch follow. So I'll just do that. And then if you come down here, as you see, pitch follow, all I have to do, I can make tons of instances. It's pretty much like a a, um, a blueprint for a synthesizer that I want to use and then I can give it uh, arguments just so like say for all of these I'll just interpret that, 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 that and you can probably hear that now if they're all working uh, but I could just as I do here see I have pitch on set that's a new thing called pitchy I can give it arguments which I, if you look up here actually pitchy So here's the definition for pitchy. Uh, I have the argument as rev and volume. And so that means that I can say I want to set rev. Once I make an instance of it later, I can set these things uh, to different values. That's why they're arguments. It's kind of like I can have control from outside of the synth depth once it's made. Um, so yeah, this is probably, I forget, this is probably all ringy and crazy. So go through this. That. And we'll do that. Okay. So, Now I got everything turned down, so it should just be that. Um, put this over here, and then let's look back at the code. So now I can explain it without all the effects going. Um, so I remember it was saying the send trig was something that sends uh, information back. Um, this is done through an OSC thing called OSC func for function. Um, it's kind of complicated what happens here. But anyways, whenever it gets a message that's equal to this, which uh, I said earlier that when I send centrig, 
I'm giving it in a number. So whenever it matches that, it's going to trigger this function, which is all of this. Um, so what's happening in here is these were the rhythms I was showing you earlier at the very beginning. So when it runs this function, it chooses one of these randomly. And then, uh, so this you can just think of this as, as the rhythm. Just think of it as the written out rhythm. Um, and then it's going to play it's going to play a sample of whatever sound triggers it. So say if I snap, here I'll, I'll turn it up, actually, and then I, I can do the speed too. So if I do this and then I snap, you should be able to hear that. Pretty much, what's happening with that is that uh, the snap is triggering it, but then it's also making a buffer go back to the beginning and record whatever that snap, whatever the, uh, whatever made it be triggered. So that's just a gate. It's going over a certain volume threshold to make it do that. And whenever it does that, it's going to make this routine happen, which is going to play the sound at a different rate, uh, so the rate like is going to be playing slower or faster than what triggered it. So it's kind of, it's actually kind of complicated to explain, but um, if you just see, if I do this, ooh, you see I snapped, you see I snapped first and then I made a sound and it took that sound and played it over and over again. Um, which is actually going to be the size of the rhythm that I used earlier. Um, so it's pretty interesting. It's kind of complicated, but um, you know, it's okay. Uh, this is just all GUI stuff, or means graphical user interface, which is what this guy is. Um, actually, kind of complicated. It took me a while to figure out how to do that. Um, and so I also made some scenes. So after all this works and everything, so actually. I'll show you the next one, the delay. Hey, so this is a pitch-based one. So if I if I make a different uh, pitch, it's going to change the speed of the delay. So let's show you that. Oh, 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 oh. So that's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty cool because it's interactive then. Reverb is um, interesting because you just, it's a threshold thing too. So after I snap now the reverb is activated. It stays on uh, for about 15 seconds and then it dies out slowly. So it's slowly going out and now it's probably gone. I'm going to turn it up. This is just a pitch shift, uh, so it's just normal type of pitch shift, what you would think it would be. Right now, you probably hear two different pitches, you know. Okay, and then, uh, and all this down here is just uh, CC responder, which means control, control something. I actually forget what that means. Um, but it just means this is my Axiom Pro. This is here. Um, this is the number for that. This is the channel it's on, and that's the CC number it should be receiving something from. And then it's telling it to make that knob become whatever value is passed into it. So that's another thing. Um, which is cool that once you do all this, then um, I can make different functions for presets. So you saw me do this before. I made one scene be this function, which means set all these values. So I could do this manually just like this. go and click each one, you know, that's kind of, you know, you don't want to be doing this in the form list. Um, if we do stop. Uh, that. So, anyways, you can evaluate these functions, and if you just do, they're not here, you can see I have them. Uh, if you just do value, it's actually going to make them all jump to different scenes. Like that. So that's 
pretty cool. And then you can also set all those as well to different MIDI buttons. So I'm hitting different buttons on my MIDI controller, and that's making all these change right now. So hopefully, pretty soon I want to make a piece, and then it'll use all these functions. So thanks for watching. It's pretty long, but I uh, hope you learned something, and stay tuned for more.